Well, I want to thank everyone out there in, uh, on their phones, on their computers, for checking out my YouTube channel. Uh, about four years ago, I put my first YouTube channel out into the internet, and the response was, was really strong, and so that made me want to, want to share more of my information with the public. And over the last four years, we've had about 1.3 million views. That's been a lot of fun, and it's really been encouraging for us because it shows there's a lot of, a lot of need out there for uh, the information that we're sharing. So I just wanted to thank you for taking time out of your busy life to check out our channel. What I have in my hand is the next step in our evolution as a system of trying to communicate ideas to you. There's a book that we've written. It's called Your Genius Body. And really what it is, it's a summary of all the work that we've put into our practice, put into functional medicine over the last about nine years. So if you like the ideas you see on today's video or some of the other videos on our channel, I would highly encourage you to get your hands on this book. This book is really a summary um, and a great reference for all the ideas that we use to help our patients as we share in these videos. So you can get this if you go to www.beyondmthfr.com and you'll have an option there to purchase the book either in paperback, which uh, is always a little easier on the eyes, or you can also download the digital version for your Kindles and iPads. So I hope you enjoy this coming video here and then please stay tuned for the end. We'll have a special message for you at the end of the video as well. I'm excited to bring you a new video. I know it's been quite a while since I was able to publish one. All I can say is it's been an amazing year and we've been super busy with lots of growth in our practice and uh, personally as well. But I hope to refocus on this because I have a lot of great information I'd love to share with you and help uh, you know, bring some awareness to some important issues. Today's video is going to be around ADD and low dopamine. And those of you who followed a lot of our work, this may be a topic you've heard about uh, before, but I'm really going to expand on it today in a different way uh, to, to share with you these ideas. So the concept for this talk is that people have predictable symptoms when they have high or low dopamine. And this is a model that we've developed in our practice. It's based on the research and uh, neurochemistry. And the idea is that we have a bell curve, or a, research calls it a U-curve. I use a bell curve because that's how my brain likes to look at things. And, and this red line represents that bell curve. And this is, today's video we're talking about the low catecholamine phenotype, or said another way, people who have a tendency to have low dopamine or low, low norepinephrine, low adrenaline. There are people out there who are suffering because their dopamine is too low and they have a certain set of symptoms that makes them unique and different than people who have high dopamine symptoms. And we'll, we'll make a future video uh, and explain how the high dopamine symptoms really work. But for the low dopamine person, the low catecholamine person, ADD and ADHD is a very common symptom in this group. And when we've done work now for years on looking at genetics, you know, the question is, am I sick because my genes are there or am I sick because of environment that is making my body sick? Well, our philosophy at our practice and with all the work we've done uh, with Beyond MTHFR is that your genes, in fact, are not your destiny, but they are your tendency when you're under stress. So your genetic programming that you're born with is always changing and adapting to the environment and we have control over the environment. So it dawned on me a few years ago that this model of dopamine was a good model for understanding symptoms that I saw in practice. And today's video, as I said, is about ADD and ADHD, but there's quite a few other ones we're going to talk about in future videos. So the moral of the story with this is on this bell curve of dopamine, the x-axis is low dopamine moving over to high dopamine levels in the brain, okay? Dopamine activity in the brain, if you will. The, uh, the vertical axis, the y-axis, is brain function. So you see when your dopamine is low, over here, your brain function is low. But as you increase dopamine, you get into this Goldilocks sweet spot where you get really good brain function. But if you continue to increase dopamine without stopping, you'll actually go down the other side of the curve and have poor brain function again with different symptoms. So ADD and ADHD 
Why am I talking about this common problem and relating it to dopamine? Well, the reason is, is that lack of dopamine is associated with ADD and ADHD. That is, when people are given medications like Ritalin, um, methylphenidate, as the generic is called, it's a methamphetamine. It's literally identical to methamphetamines that you go to prison for, yet uh, we're giving this to our kids to try to improve their focus. When we're giving kids and adults Ritalin or methylphenidate, what's happening is you're increasing dopamine and, and adrenaline, nor adrenaline in the brain, and that improves focus. How do I know that? Well, the research that's published shows that 90% of the time when someone has a diagnosis of ADHD or ADD, that they will experience an improvement. So if raising your dopamine with the drug makes you better 90% of the time, what we conclude is that part of your problem is that you had low dopamine to start with. Pretty basic idea, right? Now it's interesting, there's a difference in ADD and ADHD, males to females. So it's important to understand first that men have a tendency to have low dopamine and low catecholamines. This movie, Grumpy Old Men, is a great flick. Well, it's not called Grumpy Old Women because that's not, the, that's not what we observe. We observe that as men uh, go through their life, boys and men, they tend to have more episodes of anger and grumpiness than females. Just in general, it's been my observation in the clinic and most people I've talked to would agree with that. Boys tend to get grumpy, give them a Snickers bar, hopefully not, but give them something to eat, raise their blood sugar again and they feel better, okay? This is part of our, our biology. It's how our hormones and our genes interact with our chemistry. So first of all, men are more susceptible to low catecholamines, low dopamine. And when we look at ADD and ADHD, the ratio is about three to one. So boys are much more likely to have ADD and ADHD than girls. And why is that? Well, if this model of low dopamine holds any water, then it explains why, right? The low dopamine model explains this because we already know that men and boys are susceptible to lower dopamine. And we know that low dopamine drives the symptoms of ADD and ADHD because when they give a medication to raise dopamine, 90% of them get better. That's all logical and it makes sense. The research just corroborates what we know. Now, many of you have followed our work on methylation and MTHFR, and these are all connected topics. Because a poor MTHFR system, either genetic mutations or you know, dietary environmental problems with that MTHFR system, what that will do is that will lower the level of dopamine that you can make. People with MTHFR are much higher, at a much higher risk of depression. And that has simply to do with the fact that when your MTHFR is slowed, you do not make as many neurotransmitters as quickly as other people. If you have low dopamine and problems associated with low dopamine, taking activated folate and B vitamins and maybe amino acids like tyrosine will make you better. That's the beautiful thing. They work. But the, the hard part is knowing whether you have high or low dopamine, and that's what these videos are in, intended to help you figure out. So this does connect to MTHFR from the point of view that boys and girls with ADD, ADHD don't have enough dopamine, and making more dopamine is what MTHFR is involved in. It's heavily involved in how fast and how much neurotransmitters we make. Looking at the discrepancy between boys and girls, this was a study, uh, you know, it's almost 20 years old, but interestingly, around puberty, boys have a whole lot more receptors for dopamine than girls. So the, the male brain is just, has a higher need for dopamine. That's the moral of the story. I'll get into that in other videos um, here in the near future, but really what happens is boys' brains are sensitive to dopamine levels more than females and they need it more than females and so when the dopamine is low it's going to affect boys more and that may explain why it's two to four times higher in, in men than women okay guys just need a steady supply of dopamine or the brain won't work very well women need it too but it seems to hit boys especially uh, teenagers and young adults more than anyone else 
there are lots of neurotransmitters, but in my opinion, dopamine rules the roost. It is the ultimate thing that we are after when we decide to go skydiving, when we decide to go rock climbing a thousand feet off the deck, when we decide to do all kinds of crazy, dangerous, quote unquote, uh, you know, extreme sports, or even play football, right? Anything that's exciting is a, gives you a bump in dopamine and our brain is programmed to seek those things out. So as we look at dopamine levels and we are able to see who's high dopamine and who's low, we're able to really make changes for people who've been resistant to other treatments, other, other types of approaches. It's really been rewarding. But dopamine has a huge impact on memory, learning, and movement. They're all catecholamine dopamine dependent. Think about Parkinson's disease. So it's a very challenging illness and science, despite its best efforts, we haven't really broken through to figure out how to turn these people around. And that's what happens to the body. What happens to a Parkinson's patient is what happens when you run out of dopamine. It's a significant problem to the system. Dopamine is, is needed, but it's hard to keep it in the right Goldilocks position. And that's what our practice and all the research we've done on methylation has helped me, helped me accomplish for people. So this chart, really just a visual to explain why dopamine is so important for ADD and ADHD. Years ago, before I was even thought I would become a doctor, and I was probably a teenager, you know, I heard people who had problems with hyperactivity and they took a stimulant. They took methylphenidate or Ritalin. And I'm thinking, you know, just logically, why would you give someone who's already overactive a stimulant? And yet it works in 90% of the cases. That fact makes sense now. The reason you're seeing hyperactivity in somebody with ADD and ADHD and somebody with low dopamine is simply this. This green area in the front of the brain, it's basically, it guides your brain function. It's the big babysitter that controls all this primitive emotional stuff that's happening in our deeper brain centers in our limbic system and our emotional system you know this is kind of the human brain and the mammalian brain then you have the reptilian brain but really all that emotional regulation that seeing the big picture being a very well-mannered um, self-control your 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 real uh, your best personality your best ability to take tests to achieve in sports to achieve in life all that good quality comes from the ability of the frontal lobe to function. And the frontal lobe is, is run by dopamine. Just that simple. Okay. When you lose dopamine, your frontal lobe goes down like this blue arrow shows. And now you have escape or expression of these impulses, this irritability, this lack of focus that comes out from these deeper brain centers. In other words, when you lack dopamine, your brain when you're low dopamine, I should say, when you're low dopamine, the brain isn't going fast enough and it can't focus long enough to learn well, to sit in a classroom for 45 minutes and go through a lesson while you sit in your desk. That takes a lot of focus, a lot of concentration. Without dopamine in the system, the brain is just going to be looking at everything and anything but what it should be looking at. Okay. And so I share this picture with you just so you have a model to understand. When the frontal lobe goes down, these deeper systems just erupt. And again, another look at the bell curve. This is really my most important piece of functional medicine work or nutritional work, genetic work I've ever put together. I've, this, this model, this picture has helped me help more people than anything else I've ever discovered in my, for my own practice. And it is the model of the bell curve of dopamine. And what we strive to do for our patients is figure out whether someone is low, like this blue star, and they need to increase their dopamine levels to get back to the Goldilocks optimum area. Or if they're like the red star, kind of like feeling like this young woman here, and we have to bring their dopamine levels down, and that actually helps them. And we'll talk about that in the future. So ADD and ADHD is related to low dopamine. We know that because Giving people drugs that raise dopamine makes 90% of those kids better. We don't have to use medication. There's no law that says you have to take Ritalin. There are other ways, and that's what we focus on using MTHFR and B vitamins and methylation pathways and 
BH4 levels and amino acid support and, and really the whole toolbox of functional medicine makes sense here but you should understand that's what you're doing. Your goal is to raise dopamine levels in adults and children with ADD and ADHD. That will greatly help them. So I hope you've enjoyed this short video and again my apologies for my uh, sabbatical but we are back and we're going to make some more. It's going to be a lot of fun sharing the new stuff with you guys. And if you haven't had a chance, check out the book, Genius Body. It's a great read. It's a good handbook for all these ideas, uh, good reference. And if you happen to be a practitioner who is interested in this work that I've done and we've put out over the last few years, we have a coaching program. Uh, it starts in about two weeks. It's once a week on a Thursday morning, and it's going to walk you through how to implement these ideas in your practice. There's going to be a lot of hand-holding and really good teaching on how to apply all these ideas of MTHFR, dopamine levels, epigenetics, gut health, and we're going to take you through 12 weeks and help, help you implement these in your practice. So if that's something you're interested in, we'd love to hear from you. We only have a few spots left, and you can email our office at care at redmountainclinic.com, and we will give you all the info. And you can find info on the coaching program on the Beyond MTHFR website as well. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, you've, made it, you've made it through the video. Hopefully there's some, some information here that you can relate to your own life, to your friends, family. Um, I'm just basically sharing with you everything we use in our practice. I don't believe that healthcare should be something that you always have to pay a ton of money to get the information you need. I'd like to get all the information we can out there for free. And that's part of what this YouTube project is all about. So if you like this video, if you like our channel and the information we have, get yourself a copy of this book. But even more than that, if you're somebody out there who's looking for help for yourself, for a loved one, for a friend or family member, you reach out to us. We have a clinic that serves people from over 20 different countries. And we have people, people traveling from Europe, traveling from all over the United States to see us in person. And we also do work over the internet uh, through a telemedicine practice. So, uh, Red Mountain Natural Medicine is the name of our office here in Boise and if you like what's on this video and you need some help yourself, uh, please reach out. We'd love to hear from you and we'll figure out a way to help you get the help you need. Thanks so much and have, a, have an excellent day.